free energy and thermodynamics. Now let's introduce our next chapter. We'll discuss free energy and thermodynamics. We'll also take this video to introduce and review some basic definitions that will help get us started in the chapter. This chapter is largely about spontaneity and all of the components that make a process spontaneous or non-spontaneous. We have already discussed enthalpy in depth and entropy a little bit, so we'll flesh out our concepts of entropy, including microstates, which we haven't discussed yet. And then this will help us tell whether entropy increases or decreases and how it impacts spontaneity. We will define and use the second law of thermodynamics and use the combination of enthalpy and entropy to discuss whether our process is spontaneous or not. Finally, we will pull all of this together in the form of an equation and calculate the Gibbs free energy, which we can use to easily tell if a process is spontaneous or not. Throughout all of this, we're going to be learning about standard and non-standard values for enthalpy, entropy, and the Gibbs free energy. In this introduction, we are also going to take a moment to define some basic terms. We'll talk about spontaneous versus non-spontaneous, reversible versus non-reversible, and kinetics versus thermodynamics. These three comparisons are going to be helpful to putting this chapter in terms of the rest of the class. Even though much of this we won't go into more detail in in this class, and in fact, you won't see it until 1C. This chapter could be summarized by, will it happen? In other words, will a process happen spontaneously or does it require energy to occur? Something like a glow stick after it's been cracked or a rusting car we know will happen spontaneously. We don't have to put in energy. One thing that we won't cover is how fast it will happen. So in this example or this comparison, we know that a glow stick happens very, very quickly. We can watch it happen before our eyes. We can watch the reaction start to glow and then fade as it runs out of its reactants. Meanwhile, rusting takes years or longer to happen. I bring this up because diamonds are actually an example of this to an even further extreme, and having the rusting versus glow stick example is helpful. By the end of the chapter, we will be able to determine that a diamond turning into graphite is spontaneous. Yet we know that our diamonds certainly are not turning into pencil lead before our very eyes. And this is because it happens so slowly that it doesn't affect us on a human time scale. We won't be covering these kinetics until much, much later, but it's worth bringing up here that it plays a role in how we see things, even if our math tells us that something might be spontaneous. A spontaneous process will only occur in one direction, it occurs without being driven by any outside force. A process is spontaneous in that one direction, then it will be non-spontaneous in the other direction. This is what we call a non-reversible reaction. For example, a car is never going to suddenly go from a rusted out shell into a brand new shiny metal. Rusting is an example of a spontaneous process. There are examples of reactions that can go in both directions. These are called reversible processes, and they will generally reach an equilibrium. This too is something that we're going to cover in later chapters, but it's just worth noting that they exist here so as to contrast them to the systems that we'll be talking about in this chapter. I want you to see a discussion of what we just did here in a slightly different way. So I found a video that actually does this in a very different way than I do, and it's posted here and will be posted in the YouTube description for easy clicking and watching. This will walk you through a different way of looking at the kinetics versus thermodynamics than what we did here and just give you a slightly different perspective. Remember that this chapter is all about thermodynamics and you'll be covering kinetics in later chapters. I just think that it's best to ensure that you learn that the thermodynamics exists in the same realm that the kinetics, even if we're only covering the thermodynamics portion. In review, we will be covering more thermodynamics in this section. We are focusing on spontaneous versus non-spontaneous processes, or will it happen? It's important to recognize that there is another aspect to all of this, which will be covered in later chapters, which is the when will it happen and the situation of reversible reactions where you have equilibriums occurring. Those will all be covered in later chapters and in 1C.